Hey guys, it's Cam with Hope to Canine Foundation. I'm gonna show you a little quick demonstration of what we're talking about when we tell you to chicken style feed your dog. Um, particularly this pertains to puppies or adult dogs that we've recommended utilizing their food hunting abilities for drive fulfillment. So if we say, hey, you've got a super um, you know, driven dog that wants to hunt and use its nose, you should capitalize on that and harness their food motivation and teach them to hunt for their food so that they're more challenged mentally and physically. But in a quality mental exercise, you drain that body so much more than a physical, just a physical exercise of playing, chasing the ball, what have you. So Bucky's here, he's here for one week. He'll be back again when he's a little bit older for two weeks. And one of the things that I have his owners doing at home on a daily basis is chicken style feeding or scattering the food and having him hunt for every morsel. He's extremely food motivated and he's also a hound dog. So naturally he wants to use that nose. He wants to hunt. He needs the challenge of uh, working for that food in order to also leverage it and help address any sort of attitudinal stuff that might be brewing with him. So let me flip you around and show you a couple of options of what this might look like. All right, so with chicken style feeding, you can use a small yard space like this. You can use a large property area, ideally, if you have a great green space. You literally just scatter the food, just like that. Just as if you were gonna feed a uh, flock of birds, okay? Now he has to walk around and use his nose to find each and every morsel. The delay on consumption is also a solution for dogs who maybe inhale their food too quickly. They eat so fast that they give themselves a, you know, stomach issues. Maybe they vomit it back up. There could be different reasons why there's, uh, it's problematic for them to inhale their food. Sometimes you'll be recommended a slow feed bowl. We'll look at that nature slow feed bowl. He has to use his nose, find every morsel. And even in this environment where he can see them, there's still, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of challenge and mental drain to going after each and every one of those pieces. Now, if we had the opportunity to be out in a field, even better. More smells, more hunting, more var variation on just even the bacteria that your dog is exposed to because this is also something that is actually valuable. When we have a sterile environment for either species um, exclusively, it does not help to promote a strong immune system. So being able to take that food and cast it out into the yard, into the, the larger grass areas, this is not real grass, um, and have that animal hunt and get some of the dirt and microorganisms that are present there, so really, really helpful. Another option if you don't have any enclosed space whatsoever, let's say you're telling me, Cam, I live in an apartment, how do I do this with my dog? You can take them on a walk, on a leash or a long line, take them to an area like a ball field or something like that and scatter it there and just allow them to drag that long line with you on the other end of it. When I say long line, I'm talking about a specific leash that's 15 to 30 feet in length. You can order them online through various distributors, um, anything from a Lucas Agnew slip lead to a lunge line for horse training. Um, they are available in biothane, so water resistant material. They're available in nylon, which is what we typically have here, a nice thin light nylon lead. Um, just do a little bit of research and look for a long training lead or a lunge line. You can find that online. You can let your puppy or your dog drag that, okay? Just just have you have the end of it so that you have them secured in case you're in an open off-leash situation. Um, or even on a trail. You can take them on a hiking trail and be scattering the food and allowing your dog to hunt and find that, especially if you maybe do a bit of exercise and then stop somewhere at the top and toss that food for them to hunt for. In the beginning, this can take a little bit of training for the dog to understand what's the point, right? If you're not in the habit of this early on and your puppy's been eating in their crate or you've been feeding them in the kitchen, they might need a little bit of support just with your patience and consistency to learn, hey, this is how you eat. You better get busy. You've gotta do the work and find that food for yourself. That's pretty normal, um, unless they just have a really high natural drive and instinct to hunt or a really high natural drive and motivation for food, okay? Um, a lot of times with kibble feeding as well, this is just kind of like crack. There's, there's a lot of sugar, if you will. There's a lot of carbohydrate. Um, it's one of the reasons I'm not a big you know, proponent of raw feeding because... <clears throat> It really does tend to add a lot of energy where you're trying to actually get that dog 
um, you know, calmer, quieter, more satisfied, like we see with a fresh or raw diet. So if you think about it, if we're gonna have to feed kibble and we want that dog to get more bang for their buck in terms of energy drain, this is a great way to do it and you do not have to have a super large space. I've had clients who have as little as just a sitting area on their patio like this, toss it, send it around the rug. You can drop it under and around the, you know, near around the furniture pieces. The dog will go under the chairs and things like that. It's absolutely fine. Something is better than nothing. Okay, guys, something is better than nothing. Don't be afraid to give this opportunity to your pet, even indoors. One option would be using cookie sheets. So if you have a couple of cookie sheets, just spread the food around. Instead of making it so easy for them to stick their face in the bowl and inhale all, all of that food in 20 seconds, just spread it around on some cookie sheets or in your Amazon boxes, okay? That would be another really easy way to do this. If you get Amazon deliveries, you can put, um, you know, six or seven smaller boxes in your living room. A couple of them could have the flaps ripped off. Some of them could have the flaps sort of um, open, but floppy, flappy. So the dog has to learn to get inside the box and take the food out and deal with the pressure, the stimulus, the, the distraction or the aversion that is that different, um, you know, restricted and access to the box. These are all ways to enhance this activity and to make it versatile for your space, whatever that may be. Okay. Um, so obviously I'm going to let him work on this for quite some time and, you know, get everything up. And then, uh, if you've got multiple dogs, they can do this all together. If you have resource guarding issues, this is actually a really fantastic solution for helping resolve resource guarding issues. When you chicken style feed, the experience for the pack is essentially that there's plenty to go around. So you really do help reduce that sense of urgency or, or limitation on access. And it can be a really um, key strategy that some of us use as trainers to help resolve some resource guarding issues. Um, but in this case, I just really want you to see a demo for what we're talking about with puppies. And you can do this right from the very beginning of when you get them. You can start it again in a small area, teaching them to hunt just a handful of pieces on your kitchen floor. Um, you can teach them the, the cookie sheets are, you know, two or three of them spread out in different areas and they have to go back and forth between them. The boxes I mentioned or little plastic trays, you know, like shoe boxes. Um, those work really well, and there's just an absolute ton of value in doing this activity, even if it's just once a day uh, for part or all of one meal, or you can do it, you know, a couple times a day in your backyard. Um, since your dog's not getting enough exercise, this is an absolute essential thing to at least be doing with their meal service.